Yes, uh, uh, good afternoon, students. Uh, let's start then on the sessions. Uh, this uh, second model, and uh, so in the second model, uh, we are going to discuss about you know the uh, it's called uh, measurement of directions and angles. Measurement of directions and angles, and another topic that is called a traversing. Okay, so here in the model two, there are two uh, the uh, two topics which we are going to discuss. Uh, one is measurement of directions and angle. Another one is traversing. Okay. So in the let's start with you know uh, measurement of direction and angle. Okay. And in that there will be a first uh, the you know the topic we call it as in compass survey. So first of all we need to understand what is compass. I think you might have seen in your mobile the compass. That may not be the Brenton compass, that may not be the prismatic, that may not be the surveyor compass. That is a just normal compass which gives you the directions. Yes, this is north, south, east, west. Right. Uh, other sh my voice is audible. Was voice is audible? Sir. Audible? Can you can you Hello, Adi Yes, sir. Voice is audible, no? Ah, clear. Sir. Okay. So you might have seen in your mobile there is a compass. Okay, that gives you the only the direction. I mean, which side? East, west, north, south. Okay. So when you come to the you know the surveyor compass and prismatic compass, Brenton compass, Brenton compass generally we use it for a geologist uh, for generally you know directions, bearings. That's uh, and also for uh, the inclination of amount of inclination of the bedding planes. So the rock exposure or uh, exposure, which is exposure on the surface of the earth, that is dipping towards somewhere in a uh, called you know eastern side or it may be western side or it may be south or north. So those you know the bedding planes, the dipping or the slope amount, that we need to measure it. For that purpose, we use the compass, Brenton compass. Okay, that is a thing. And another one is a prismatic compass. Next one is a surveyor compass. Right, and the the ordinary compass ju just to see the you know the uh, the directions. Uh, normal people will use it. Okay, let me let me share the screen now so that we can we can start the uh, things now there. Right. Okay. Scale in the scale. Have you seen all of you in your uh, mobile? There is a compass. Dipti, Dhananjay Kumar, Divyasri. Have you seen the compass? Yes, sir. Yes. Have you used anywhere for any purpose? I mean, uh, when you are traveling. Uh, which side you are heading, which side you are, you know, traveling. Huh? Arshita, Arshita. Yes, sir. Have you seen the, the compass in your mobile? I've seen, sir. Uh, have you used that for any purpose? No. Sometimes to find north. Is it? Yes, you sir. can easily find out the north from the where, you know, uh, the sunrise is happening there. Uh, yeah, but when know. when your sunrise when uh, your sunrise is on right side of your uh, you know the thing and your uh, you know the direction where you are standing that's your north. Uh, then next. The poles kind of shift. Okay, 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 okay. That that yeah, that will be there. That is a, maybe the you know error. Uh, so from the the magnetic or the magnetic. Yeah, that's a magnetic, uh, you know, the, there are two, you know, the things uh, in that uh, uh, magnetic, uh, true north and uh, magnetic north. There are two ah, types yes, of uh, so that. Uh, that will be changed from place to place. Mm. It will not be a uniform. Yes. Some places it may be a five degree variation. Some may, some places may be a two degree variation. It depends. Depends on the magnetic, uh, you know, the Earth's magnetic field. Okay, you might have, you know, uh, read these things in the, you know, primary or in the PU level. Earth's magnetic field. 
okay that is how the things that may be change that that we need to okay yes, for general directions it's not a problem five degree you can go there but when you are surveying five degrees very big error for you guys for surveying so for you general purpose you can use it in such a way that okay that is a thing and uh, anybody has used the any other compass any other compass i know the most of the you know they are busy with the whatsapp and other things in the gadget and uh, you know they may forget okay wherever the bus goes or train goes flight goes we'll travel that's it okay, of course train is uh, uh, we are not uh, at all bothering about you know which direction it's going okay you must you know understand the you know, geography i mean it's a general of course you are a civil engineers you must know this now before this you are you know uh, just like you know normal man now you are a civil engineers okay you must know the you know geography you know which side is a heading which side is a north east west south eh? north east south west eh? north west to south east which side is the direction when you ask someone else yeah it is in the north direction or maybe now north south you may not express you may not mention the you know latitude longitude that is very difficult part so at least you can say that yeah it's a northern side southern side eastern western whatever the you know the geographic look you know the the direction if you say that yes you are confident on the you know geography on maybe in the directions because you are in such a field right now okay so that is the thing uh, anybody has used any other compass hmm the varsha Three eighty many. Uh, why is this audible or uh, not responding? Sayed Nizamuddin. So, yeah. Have you used the co compass? Have seen the compass? Mm, phone, sir. Okay, no, no phone or it may be any other place. Sir, no, sir. Hmm. In the phone, you don't have phone. You have the phone, right? Sir, I have phone, sir. I But use really uh, compass. Okay. Why you are busy with the WhatsApp? Sir, no, not like that, sir. <laughs> yeah, it happens. But you, you now onwards, you can go and check the things. How it is opening? You know, uh, there will be a speedometer. Also, will be there. How fast your vehicles can move, and uh, there will be a called uh, GPS is also there. Uh, Inbuilt GPS also there. Okay, and also your what you call this um, the compass is there. So many things are there which are useful for, which is very useful for your, you know, the your profession as well as you know early stage. I mean, you are in early stage of civil engineers. You can you can start you know uh, utilize in such a way that uh, it should be very useful for your career. Okay, that is the thing. So let's start with you know the called uh, uh, compass surveying. So why we are using this? What is the principle of compass survey? The principle of compass survey is the you no know, traversing, which involves a series of connected lines. Say, for example, if you want to survey from uh, BMSIT College from one corner of the compound to the, you know, sort of complete our campus uh, area. So it is a series of connected, you know, lines will be there. and also it is not you know one straight uh, line it is there will be a, you know uh, changes in the direction so the change of direction you need to mark it you need to record you need to take the readings that's called your bearings i mean bearings in the sense the degrees maybe the not 10 degree yes or that is a whole circle bearing uh, you know the reading what you are taking so some places it may uh, you know you can take another type of quadrangle readings okay not 10 degree west south 10 degree east like that that is a quadrangle another one is a whole circle bearing is there that means with respect to the north you are reading the you know taking the readings either you should take whole circle bearing reading or you should take uh, the quadrangle don't take both otherwise it will be a confusion and it's uh, you know difficult to you know plot the things okay so better you take either you know quadrangle or you can take the whole circle bearing anyone you can choose both are simple to 
plot in the paper or in your drawing piece. Okay, it is a very simple uh, things called you know principle of compass surveying is the traversing, which involves a series of connected lines with the different deviations, maybe a northeast, southwest. Northwest, southeast, like that. The magnetic bearing of lines is measured with a prismatic compass. Okay, so compass surveying is recommended when the area is large, undulating, and crowded with the many details. That means a lot of obstacles. Okay, generally we use it for uh, you know area is very big, very large, and uh, you know where there is a bushes or there where there is a difficult you know uh, ship the instruments and or install the instrument there. Okay, so compass is a very handy one, and you can easily, you know, what you call this, uh, take it anywhere. Uh, so it's a, that's why we generally prefer that uh, you know the compass uh, for uh, you know, the survey point of view. Generally, I used to take. I mean, I'm a geologist. Okay, so I used to take the you know compass for uh, direction as well as uh, you know take the, what I I told you that you know take the you know uh, the uh, rock exposure. Uh, strike as well as the dipping. Which side is the dipping? Which side is the inclined? The so angle of inclination of the beddings, rock exposure, and as well as the direction. That's called our strike direction. Strike and dip. Both are perpendicular to each other. Okay, that we are going to discuss in the model three. Yeah, model three in engineering geology. Okay. That is a simple concept. Okay, the compass is not recommended for areas where the local attraction suspected you now suspected due to the presence of magnetic, like especially you no know, substance like steel structures, iron ore deposits, uh, electric uh, you know cables and so on. That will be you know lot of disturbance due to the you know Earth's magnetic field. Those are get disturbed. As well as it is going to affect our compass also. So it may give some reading, but it may not. Those are, that reading is not exactly the same, or it may not be the correct one, or it may be the you know nearest to the answer. I'm not sure exactly because that depends on place to place. That's why we call it as in uh, you know uh, five to six degree or you know four degree it will be a varying where always compass survey is not recommended for areas where the local attractions especially high tension power line non not this uh, normal power line eh? high tension power line okay and also the you know the iron ore deposits so iron ore deposits in the sense again we are coming back to the geology there what are the iron ore minerals so there will be a hematite magnetite goethite uh, limonite, there are things. The major minerals are hematite and magnetite. Magnetite is always uh, is attracted with a magnet, right? There is Earth's magnetic field also generating there, right? And uh, that's why the variation, the you know the compass, uh, the the bearings variation will be uh, totally different. So that's why generally we used to avoid at these places, okay? High electric cables. Uh, steel structures and uh, in iron ore deposits. Okay, for that purpose, in iron ore deposit, what we are doing a magnetic, uh, what you call um, magnetic susceptibility, we are using that, not the magnetic, you know, the Brunton compass for that. Okay, that is other things. What do you mean by traversing? Okay, in traversing the framework consists of uh, you know connected lines that we told that traversing from one place to other place from one point to other point that is a series of connected lines the length of you know the length which is measured by the chain or it may be the tape and the direction measured by the angle of uh, measuring the instrument that's called your uh, what is the uh, the compass okay right Hence, the compass serving directions of many survey lines, which are determined compass, okay, uh, with a compass and the length of the lines with a tape or chain. That is a one type of survey. So, and of course, so it is a very small instrument, but it works a lot. It works a lot, and uh, which is having you know very graduated circle inside the uh, compass, uh, and uh, there will be a line of sight on the top of that. Okay, you need to cite it 
you need to you know get the proper target or objects where you are going to survey then you check the you know the reading in the graduated circles okay and of course so the compass uh, it may not be you know measure the angle between the two lines directly but it can measure the angle of line with reference to the magnetic meridians okay that's called a magnetic bearing lines right so here there are two types of compass generally what you are going to use it one is uh, the prismatic compass other one is a surveyor compass what is the major difference here right let us start with there are prismatic and surveyor compass so it's a prismatic compass which is very portable uh, the compass which can be uh, keeping you know hand instruments and temporarily fix on the tripod if you want because you know when you hold on the you know on our hand the compass it may not be the stabilized properly your hand may be shaken or difficult to take the readings there and difficult to you know set with you know centering okay that's why generally we used to keep the you know uh, what you call this uh, uh, we used to keep the, uh, the compass on the uh, fixed on tripod so uh, the magnetic needle of prismatic compass attached to the circular ring that's inbuilt and it's made up of with the non magnetic materials whatever we have the things or inside the, you know typical parts of compass prismatic compass which is made with the non magnetic uh you know the materials okay right and generally used to make with the you know aluminum okay uh and here is the, you know that inside the you know the what you call this um, compass itself is the white and which is having through the objects vents and all those things the reading is you know zero uh zero and zero in the you know the the reading of compass is 0 degree 180 90 270 in angles right that may be the variation one so here is the you know typical parts of the you know the prismatic compass parts so here is the you no know, needle box complete metal box will be there okay and uh, yeah this is a focusing one sorry not that one So sorry okay uh this is a one what we are going to use it okay. metal box uh lever will be there inside that and uh, there will be an cord adjustment pins and this is a line side arrangement of the mirror here and you need to sun glass and here is a eye set and from this you need to uh, look at the you know object through this particular uh objective van okay then on, then you can see the uh, arrest the needle inside there will be a small button on top of somewhere here and you need to arrest that when you get the sight or the target or the object okay if you get it there then you check the reading there that's a very simple one easily you can you know understand the things okay the prismatic the box counterfeit van si sight van provide glass top metal pin and circular graduated sir and you know, arc inside that okay these are the typical you know the parts of this and uh, yeah so here uh, yes elements of prismatic compass uh, what is the uses of this compass okay it is a cylindrical metal box okay completely uh, which is having the you know diameter of 0 uh, to uh, sorry 8 to 12 cm and it's protect the compass and forms entire casing of the bodies okay and pivot is you know provided with you know center of the compass and uh, supports a freely suspended uh, what you call this a magnetic needle which is manufactured or you know fitted with you know that's called with you know aluminum okay and lifting pin okay and lifting pin and lever there will be a lifting pin and pivot which is providing an uh, just below the sight van and uh, which was you know when uh, uh, it can be you know it poses uh, press in the you know the lifting pin the all those things and magnetic needle needle in the heart of the instrument without magnetic needle that will not be a compass i would say that is a major part okay and uh, it will measure the angle of line from magnetic meridian as a needle of always remains the point at that 
the red color, the needle, one side is the red color, another side is a white one. The red color that indicates that 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 is, you know, the north directions. Just to keep it in mind that that is a north south. North is red one, red side point, and white is the south side. Okay, that is a thing, All right? And uh, where there is a red line, it's a direction in the upward direction, and right side of that, that we call it as an uh, uh, east. And uh, left side is the west. Okay, that there will be a graduated circle which are in there. And prism, prism is used to read the you know what you call the graduation on the ring, and especially the to take the exact reading by the compass. Okay, that is the thing. Right, and there will be sunglasses, reflecting mirrors will be there, eh? and also the grasshoppers. Okay, now uh, how you are going to you know. Uh, uh, Make the you know temporary adjustment of compass. What is the major you know the temporary adjustments will be there? Okay, the following uh, generally fix the prismatic you know especially with the tripod. So first thing is once you fix in the tripod, you need to make sure that the centering should be done. Centering is uh, it is an operation which is uh, compass kept exactly over the station from where the bearing is to be determined. And this centering should be checked, and uh, you know, drop a small pebble and uh, uh, x uh, underside the compass down below. I will show you that uh, the exact figure how it's be done. And if the pebble falls in the top of the peg, and you can mark it correctly, that is a one tripod point centering of the tripod. And leveling, leveling of the compass is done with a freely swing graduated circles, and there will be a small ball and socket arrangement in the tripods. And focusing is moved up and down, and the slides you can fix it easily from the vision of the observer. It's a very simple one, you can do it easily there. And uh, observing the bearing of lines. Um, before that, let's go back to the where is the tripod? Where it is the, not the tripod there. Let me show you that the tripod one, which you can easily understand the sort of practice. Uh, yes, yes. This is a one where you can, you know, uh, fix the you know, tripod here. And when you are fixing the tripod here, and from this center point, you can mark this point here. And either you can use uh, what you call this uh, plumb bob from here to fix the, this point, or you can you know, use this small stone. You can, you know, uh, for you know, you know, draw from this point to here, and you can mark it on the ground. That is a one type, and then leveling will be done with the centering there. Okay, and tripod should be you know fixed at the proper positions. I uh, should not be the the what you call this. Uh, uh, your uh, instrument should not be spoiled or damaged. Okay, that is going to not going to happen there. Yeah, why do you have seen that? I think. No, we don't have that. Okay, that is the one which are using there. Right. Very compass. All right. Uh, elements compass there. Temporary adjustment. Okay. Observing of observing the bearing line. Considering the line of line A B of which is magnetic bearing to be taken. By fixing their you know, ranging rod or at a B station, we get the magnetic bearing of the needle, which is respect to the north pole. That's the north one. And almost all our maps, okay, almost all our maps, and also the you know, uh, whatever we call uh, that's uh, topography maps. And you prepared the you know plans that should be with respect to the north. That is the one thing. Second thing is uh, while reading the you know the any map, first to check with the north. Where is the north? Right. So that exactly you can orient. You can do the you know orient your uh, plan towards north so that you can you know um, you can easily identify the features where it is exactly on the land. Okay. So observing the bearing lines, okay. This is a north-south and east-west. Okay. 
right considering line of uh, line ab which is magnetic bearing to be taken okay and uh, here is fixing with arranging rods okay or you can fix it with any other objects okay then the enlarged portion gives the actual pattern of graduation this is the inside one right surveyor compass what do you mean by surveyor compass there it is similar to the prismatic compass except uh, that it has only the plane eye slit instead of you know eye slit there with the prism and the eye hole will be there this compass having the pointed needle in place of uh, broad uh, form of needle as in case of prismatic in prismatic there will be a small needle okay right that is a uh, there's a little bit difference yeah here you can see the surveyor compass there is inside there is a graduated uh, circle Okay, inside there will be a graduated circle will be there. Uh, with this compass, uh, you cannot uh, identify, you cannot take the you know, uh, angle of inclination of the bedding planes. Uh, like, you know, the Brenton compass. I'll show you in the next class, that's the Brenton compass. Uh, what we are using as a geologist. But here it gives the you know, bearings, the directions. But uh, that will give the direction as well as the uh, dipping the amount of inclination of the any bedding planes right and here is the you know the eyesight and the reflecting mirrors and uh, you can you can focus through the, this uh, the mirrors through this especially this uh, what you call the ranging lines and alignment for all these things okay that's a very simple one okay time for that I don't know is this Okay, so here is the, you know, uh, that's called a bearings. Bearing of line is a horizontal angle, which makes the, you know, uh, reference line, that you call the reference line. Depending upon the meridians, there are four types of bearings. One is uh, true bearings. True bearing of line is, you know, horizontal angles. Uh, the, you know, true bearing lines. I'll show you in the end of the you know, slide, there will be, you know, uh, surveyed map which is, uh, you know, how we are going to take the, you know, uh, length as well as, you know, the bearings of that. So the between the meridians and the survey lines, true bearing is measured from the north, true north in a clockwise directions. Okay. And the magnetic bearing, the magnetic uh, bearing is, you know, The bearing of line in the horizontal angle, which means which which the line makes the you know, magnetic north. Okay, so gridding that is a little bit different. Bearing of line, grid bearing of line is the horizontal angle, which makes the grid material. And the next one is that arbitrary bearing of line is a horizontal angle, which makes the you know arbitrary material. Generally, we use only the two bearings, true bearing and magnetic bearings. Okay, and uh, yeah. Uh, working of you know survey compass centering leveling okay and observing the bearing of the line yes three things we need to fix it okay or set up the survey compass centering first thing we need to do second thing leveling third thing is uh, you know uh, observe the bearing of line alignment and also the target trace the first two observation names uh, same uh, you know observations are same as the prismatic compass but third one is little bit you know different than that okay in this compass uh, generally you know the reading is used to take from the you know top of the glass and uh, and the magnetic need is you know directly with the no prism is provided here no prism is there okay and here it looks like this. The whole circle bearings are there. Okay. Right. This is the angle of that. This is a magnetic. Okay. North. And this is a true bearing, two meridians. Okay. And this is a magnetic north. Okay. And this is a bearings. Right. And the uh, designations of you know, bearings, you know, decide, you know, the whole circle bearing and 
quadrangle bearing systems. As I told you that there are two types of readings or bearings or the directions. You can take it from the uh, what you call uh, from the compass. So generally, it depends on your requirement, depends on your you know the uh, what you call the convenient. You can take it. Some or some uh, you know the people they are you know familiar with you know uh, or you know they are very convenient to you know take the WCB. That's a whole circle bearing. Some more with you know quadrangle bearing systems. Okay, so it depends. But when you are going to take the readings, either you should take WCB for the whole project, or you can take it quadrangle bearing systems. Don't take uh, one reading with uh, you know one station WCB, other station quadrangle bearing systems. No, again you have to convert it. That is a very difficult part. Each and every you know stations or a points. You cannot convert it. That is a you know uh, double work as well as you know uh, you will get some uh, more error. The human error it may happens when you are converting when you are you know transferring the data from one uh, coordinate to other coordinates systems. Right. That's why uh, at the early stage, I mean before start uh, the project work or survey work, you need to decide yourself and make sure that. Uh, you should uh, take it WCB or quadrangle bearing. That is the most important. And uh, here is the you know, whole circle bearing. What do you mean by whole circle bearing? What is there? The bearing of a line which is measured with respect to the magnetic meridians in the clockwise directions. So that is 0 to 360 degrees. How you are going to read it? Three, 0 to 360 degree here. So here, uh, say for example, I would say this is this is a north, and uh, when you are you know uh, reading from this point zero and three sixty at northern position, and ninety here, one eighty, two seventy, and three sixties are zeros. So when your object is somewhere here, and uh, how you are going to read it? This is with respect to that. Let's call it just a minute. Let me, let me, let me, let me draw the lines first. This one. Yeah. So your whole circle bearings, and when you are going to take, uh, that's called, uh, yeah, this is a north. When your object is somewhere here. An object is somewhere here. So how we are going to mark this? So this is your actual direction, right? And this is your north. Okay, north 50 degree west. Sorry, north 50 degree east. That's your whole circle bearing readings. So this is a 0, 90, 180, 270, 360, 360 or 0. So from north, 70, sorry, north, 50 degree east and south, 50 degree west. This is how you can convert or you can take it as one is the north, 50 degree west, sorry, east. That's enough. Wherever you know plot, you can easily plot it there. Okay. And don't make any mistakes there. North, 50 degree east and uh, south 50 degree way, uh, east no don't write like this this is very you know sometimes it may happen the, the hurry up so one reading you write north 50 degree east that's a whole circle bearing the quadrangle bearing north okay 50 degree east and uh, if you want you can write it as a south 50 degree west so 0 to 90, one quadrangle, first quadrangle, second, third, and fourth, four quadrangles. As per your convenience, you can take that. Okay. The quadrangles start from the progress of clockwise directions as the first quadrant, 0 to 90. As I told you that, the, the clockwise directions, second uh, is the 90 to 180, third is uh, 270 to 180 to 270. 
and the fourth one is uh, uh, 272 360 that is a fourth quadrant okay All right this is the whole circle bearings this is a north true north direction north south east west right and if you get the readings anywhere here this is a north 70 degree east right that's all or so north 135 degree west or north 365 degree that's all not 365 degree that's a whole circle bearing don't mention the east don't mention the west north 55 degree not 70 degree that's all that's a whole circle bearing quadrangle that is again the you know divide with okay not 10 degree east that is a quadrangle not 10 degree don't make it east west north south sorry east west or uh, south one okay this is north 70 degree okay north 135 here okay north 265 here north 328 look at this it's the easiest way of you know one side to start with and end with i know where it is if you take the quarter angle it will be a little bit confusion so better to take respect to the whole circle bearing that would be the better one okay yeah here you can see this the directions uh, east west north south this is a graduated circle inside that and the major circles are here okay right here is i know the the clear one what we are serving that this metal box and uh, fixed the graduated uh, plane here magnetic needle van on both sides okay and bubbling bubble tube for you know leveling process okay Right. Then here is a prismatic compass survey versus survey compass. List count of prismatic compass and the survey compass. What is the major difference here? That uh, you can see this divide uh, will be there on both sides. When will be there? Directions and the needles will be a little bit different than and this here and the graduated circle is very clearly marked and here is also marked. Okay and uh, major difference in this totally not that much okay components that we discussed there temporal adjustment that's all done thus okay now we are going to do this adjustment and the leveling okay okay all right trying to present the compass okay that we discussed here uh, working with the compass Yes, uh, direction of the objects, lines. Okay, so yeah, here is the things uh, what we call uh, you know when you start to survey at particular place from A point, okay, and you are moving towards you know B point. This is a horizontal one, and there is so much what the call is. When you get the deviations, that time you will need to take the you know bearings through so the you know what you call this a uh, compass, okay. From A to B, length, how you are going to measure? You can measure with the tape or the chain. That is a one thing. And how you are going to take the, you know, the bearings? That is with the compass. That's all. Measure with the compass and get the alignment and measure with the tape. That's all. And here is the polygons. You can make it. The four corners. A, B, Q, P. That's all. And intermediate one also, you can get it done. Okay, you have to survey it and you have to get it done this. This is, I know, the distance D1, D, D4, D3, D2, like this. And the angle will be the theta1, theta2, and all those things, right? And here is the things called, you know, uh, traversing uh, through the leg and close intervals. Okay, that is a rough method. It's very difficult to get the accuracy of there. Okay, and uh, yeah. Here is, you know, the bearings, uh, what you call it is, you know, like this. And uh, when graduated ring, outer ring, inner ring, line outside. So this is general, uh, I know what you call this, uh, the bearings, what we are going to take it. Start with this point, end with this. From here to here, what is the line? Maybe at 20 meters. So, and you take, you know, fix the one, 
the ranging rod here and take from the reading start with this point and take the angle of this by using your compass and uh, length you can measure by the tape or you can uh, use the uh, the chain okay same thing again you changing the direction the change of direction you can measure with the standard compass or surveyor compass or prismatic compass huh? this is how the you know things are going to be the Ah, okay, these are all the you know some of the you know metric units. So one meter is equal to thousand uh, millimeters. So one meter is equal to thousand centimeters. One kilometer is equal to thousand meters. So one thousand you know one decimeter is one by tenth. So you know the basic uh, the you know measurements and the metric units, right? Okay, and uh, these are all about the you know compass. Uh, what we are going to use, how we are going to use. Okay. Out of the principle of the compass, eh? where we are using this, okay, right. And uh, this is a basic one. When it comes to the you know, latest one, you have the compass, you have the you know the tracks, traverse tag, you have the traverse points also. That is called your GPS. Not with you know mobile GPS, with your you know normal you know fifty thousand, thirty thousand small GPS. Uh, which will give you the you know starting point and ending point wherever you want the point to be located. Just if, for example, you want to uh, do the survey of complete the BMSIT campus from one corner to other corners. Just you walk around wherever you want the point. Just to press the you know enter, you will get the latitude, longitude of that particular place. Then you move again another 20 meter. Every 20 meter, every you know 30 meter, 10 meter. If you want the readings for the particular year to get the accuracy more. And control so you can do it with a GPS that is having the point location traverse track and also you can get the uh, the objects wherever you want to uh, mark it right see these are all about the you know the compass uh, surveying hmm? um, you are all familiar with that, but a little bit, uh, you know, uh, the normal compass and the, the other compass. Hello. So, differ will be there. Okay. All right. Uh, 